it's for. And you have to be aware of that. Now turn, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, we're probably going to deal with one of the biggest ways to has it out for you is trying to set a trap for you. Usually it's both. And the, the big red flag that should be popping up in your mind, besides someone just automatically trying to convince you with something, with just some, some manufactured evidence, which... I know what you're saying, you say, well, how do I know it's manufactured? Well, you don't always know it's manufactured, but when it's, when it's already, they already have a really well thought out plan to try to convince you as opposed to just answering something naturally. And this is where you need to be able to use the sermon, but it should be a red flag. If someone already has their answer just ready to go, That ought to tell you, at least pop up some red flags saying, well, I don't think they're necessarily being honest about this. They've already been thinking about how they're going to answer some of these questions that might come up when I'm trying to validate whether or not they're being truthful with me. But the number two thing, or the, it's probably the biggest thing, is flattery. So we're going to look in Proverbs. Proverbs 29.5 says, A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Now flattery is, is when... People are not, it's not just a compliment, but when you are really trying to, um, to butter somebody up, as it were, so you know, terminology that we use, you butter someone up, or you try to, to get someone, just, just give an overload of the compliments and really get them to, to feel, you know, try to lift someone up really high and elevate them and try to get them even maybe puffed up on just based on, on the, the adoration that, that a person gives them. That's flattery. And the Bible says that a man that flattereth his neighbor, he actually he spreads a net for his feet, that he's trying to distract. Again, the deceit is that he's trying to make it look like or appear that he likes that you, he likes, he likes something about you, Maybe he thinks, you know, they're going to uh, try to appeal to your looks. Oh, you're so beautiful. You're so lovely and just lavish you with all these compliments or, oh, you're so smart. You're so intelligent. Oh, man, you're way smarter than everybody else. You know, you should ha you should have an honorary doctorate. Whatever. You're just 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 laying it on. The reason why it's flattery and the reason why people aren't generally very good at it is because it's not genuine. They're, 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 they have an ulterior motive. They're trying to set a trap. They're trying to gain your confidence. So what happens is that these deceivers will usually take things too far. They go a little bit overboard because they're really trying to gain your trust. They're really trying to get you to buy into it. They're really trying to get you to like them. So in so doing, they really just, just lay on the flattery really, really thick. And when anybody tries to do that to you at all, you ought to have red flags popping up because the Bible says that a man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. They're trying to set a trap for you. They're tricking you. They're trying to deceive you with their words to harm you. Proverbs chapter 6, look at verse number 23. The Bible says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So the Bible saying here, you know, God's commandments, his instructions, they are reproofs. This is going to give you the way of life, what things to do that are right, and they will help to keep you from the evil woman, the woman who's looking to do damage, the woman who's looking to destroy you and use the flattery of her tongue to destroy. Verse number 25, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. 
Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief. If he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house, but whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. We see here the adulterous woman that hunts for the precious life, that is evil, and that is trying to get a man to commit adultery against his wife. So what tactic does she use? She bats her eyes. She tries to make herself look outwardly as beautiful as possible and flatters the man and lays the compliments and really tries to get the man to be deceived by all of her flattery. And the Bible is just telling us here and just giving this great warning saying, look, a whorish woman, that's what is a whore, a whore that goes around and tries to commit adultery. It's a whore that goes around and, and is trying to have that relationship with men that are married, a whore does that. 